Hello, welcome back to this short demonstration of SAP Power Designer for Data Architects. This is the second session. In the first session, we created a conceptual data model in Barker Notation. Now we're going to generate and edit a logical data model. In the following sessions, we'll work on that on the phys uh, th through a physical data model and by creating a project and demonstrating traceability. So in this session, I'm going to work with the conceptual data model I created last time. And here it is, if I just open it, there is the diagram showing the uh, content of the model. If I want to see uh, one of those entities in more detail, I can, in the browser I can go and find it here, and I, there I can see the attributes and the identifiers. And here I can see that the identifier contains one attribute, and I can double click the attribute and follow that and see its details. And I like that being able to just, whenever you see something referred to in Power Designer, you could just go to it. So just as a reminder, here we have a many-to-many -many relationship called loyalty account state. Something will happen to that when I generate a logical model. There are no foreign keys in here, so loyalty account number has not been migrated across to the event or to its two subtypes. And notice the notation it's Barker notation, so we have entities within entities showing subtypes. If I go to the Tools menu, I can choose to generate a logical data model from this, which I'm going to call LDM. I could also update an existing one if I wanted to, but I don't have such a thing. In my model settings, model options for the new model, the uh, notation is going to be entity relationship and I am not allowing many-to-many -many relationships. In terms of detail, I'm not going to run a model check because I know from before there was one error. But I will save the generation dependencies and I'm going to generate it from all the entities in my model. Notice it's only showing three because two of them are subtypes and in Barker Notation in Power Designer, the subtypes really are child's children of the parent and I'll treat it as such. So if I click on OK now, what has happened is we have had a logical model generated from the conceptual. I need to tidy it up a bit. There's some obvious things to point out here. If I just make a bit of space here, my many-to-many -many entity uh, relationship called loyalty account state has been resolved into an entity because I've said I do not allow many-to-many -many relationships. So Power Design has done some work for me there. Down here, those boxes within boxes have become a fairly standard hierarchy, which I'm just going to tidy up slightly. There we go. And that all fits quite nicely onto my diagram. I just want to move that around a little bit. I know it will move if I can target it correctly. That's better. It's okay for me. And now I'm going to save the LDM into the same folder as I saved the CDM. Let's have a look at this inheritance here. It's important for later on, on the next exercise, when we generate a physical data model. Important things here are the fact that the inheritance the parent entity is loyalty account event and if I've decided that I've attached it to the wrong entity I can just change it here and it will change the structure of the model. I do not have to delete it and redraw it. We have some options here for what will happen when we generate a physical data model from this in terms of what tables will we generate and the settings we have here at the moment is that it will not generate the parent table so it will not generate an event table but it will generate the child tables, the children. So we'll get two tables and they will obviously have to have all the attributes. But we also here can specify in the LDM, are we going to have all attributes inherited through this hierarchy or just the primary, the identifying attributes? The uh, box at the moment here is grayed out. This comes into play if you say you want to generate the parent and not the children, you will need to um, add some attributes to help power designer or help users of your database discriminate between occurrences of your sub subtypes. 
So here we have the inheritance, which is called loyalty account event because that's the name of the parent entity and I'm fine by that naming standard. Now what I'm going to do is create a business rule, which is the kind of thing you can have in any model. Create a new business rule. I'm just going to call this rule one now because it doesn't really matter too much what it's called. And I'm going to link that rule to a number of attributes. I'm going to create a matrix of attributes, entity attributes in the rows and business rules in the columns. And every object in Power Designer has a collection of associated business rules. So this is what I'm going to populate. So here you can see I've got rule one and a number of attributes. And it doesn't really matter for purposes of demonstration which one, which attributes are actually linked, but I'm just going to link all the ones that are holding point balances. One thing I should remember to do is to rename the diagram in the new model to LDM so that when I look at my tabs, I do not get confused about which model is which. If I do find one a little confusing, I can close it. So the model, it's still open, it's over here, but the diagram is not. Now I want to add a new entity. Over here, I'll do it. And it's going to be called Entity 7. I'll leave it at Entity 7, so in other things later on, It'll be very obvious that it's not one I've named myself, it's one that was created here. Now I'm going to draw a dependency, dependent relationship from loyalty account event to entity seven. And you can see the foreign keys migrated um, immediately, which is something that didn't happen. And it's part of the identifier of the relationship. If I wanted to, I could actually say that it's no longer dependent and now it's not identifying. And I can see that because it's not underlined. But I'm going to go back and set that back again. The next change I'm going to make to my LDM is to actually add an attribute to a loyalty account. Let's give myself a bit more room, which I will call member name and I'm going to add it to a new identifier which I'm going to call loyalty account member has that one attribute in it and in terms of a domain Let's make some more room here. I don't actually have a domain for this, so I'm going to add another new domain in here called person name. And I'm going to make the data type characters 100. Here we go. So you can see here, member name is attached to that domain. It's not mandatory, which is a mistake on my part. Let's make it mandatory. And it's the AI there means it's in an alternate identifier. Or in other terminology, you could call it an alternate key. One thing you'll notice over here is in the browser, I have a space for extensions. And these are uh, ways of extending the capabilities of Power Designer with regards to this particular model. And I've automatically attached one, which it attaches to all the models I create, gives me some extra features. And they are over here on the diagram menu. I have extras. If I, if that was not vi visible to you, so I'll start again. All these here have been added by that extension. So I can choose to swap the page orientation to 
landscape, which actually seems to fit this diagram a little bit better. Here we go. That will matter, of course, when I want to print. But I can also change the page size. It's defaulting to A4. If it was a really big diagram, I could change it to A3. I can go through the file menu to do this kind of thing as well, but it's uh, quite a nice feature to just be able to right-click the background and do these changes. Now I'm going to save the model. And notice over here in the browser, the LDM and the CDM have got asterisks after their name, which tell me there are unsaved changes. It's fairly obvious why the logical model has got unsaved changes, so I'm going to save it. But why does the CDM have unsaved changes? Well, that's because when I generated the logical model from the conceptual model, I told it to keep a record of what I'd done. I told it to keep those generation dependencies. Those generation dependencies are visible here when I look at the generation links. My diagram here is the LDM diagram. Its origin is the CDM, the conceptual model. So I can see in this viewer where my entities came from. And I can open, in this case, the LDM entity and alongside it, the CDM entity. So they, though they have the same name, they are not the same entity. You can see they have different lists of attributes. And in this case, it's because I only added the one. They're grayed out here because I've opened these from the links viewer rather than, say, from the diagram or the browser. If I look at the version info for the entity, I can see this is the LDM entity, says its origin object is the conceptual data model entity. Now this information, this link from model to model or from object to object is recorded in the CDM and is also recorded in the LDM. So that's additional information that has been recorded in the conceptual data model, hence the need to save it. So I'm going to save it. I will close it. Do I want to save the changes? Yes, I do. I also close the logical model. Thank you for listening and for watching. Hope you'll join me for session three, where we work on the physical data model. Thank you. Goodbye.